The Big Red Kitchen Show is brought to you by Markle Auto Group, Salt Restaurant, Wren's Display, The Pampered Chef Products provided by Consultant Heidi Lepold, Sea of Red Wine, D. Ford Family Dental, Corporate Creations, D. Tendenza, Food Styling, and Photography. Welcome to the Big Red Kitchen Show, the show about former Nebraska football players who love to cook, big gentlemen who are comfortable in the kitchen. On today's show, you hear an interview about a former Nebraska football player. We'll find out where he's been and what he's been doing since, he la when, since you last saw him on the football field at Nebraska. We'll have him introduce one of his favorite recipes. We'll be doing a demonstration on a time-saving kitchen gadget, plus we'll be introducing a really special spicy beverage pairing that will enhance today's featured dish. My name is Sherry Potter and I am a professional food stylist and a food photographer and I love testing out new recipes in my studio kitchen. And today's recipe by Des Moines Adams is amazing. Spicy, spicy, spicy is all I can say about that. It's home sweet home uh, chicken wings. I almost said barbecue because it is barbecued. But before we start the show, I would like to introduce to you my spicy co-host, Angela. Hi, I'm Angela Waltman, and I am an avid cook. I also love sports, and I've made my um, career in marketing. So all of these loves have come together when I created Big Red Recipes, which is a cookbook featuring all former um, football players, all former Nebraska football mm -hmm. players. So there's over 45 guys in the book, 44 recipes, as well as over 30 um, nonprofits that benefit from the sale of this book. So more information can be found on BigRedRecipes.com. You can find out all of our guys who are involved in this project, as well as see their great recipes um, and see a little bit more about them and their families on the website. Um, but enough about the book for now, let's talk about the show. Yes. We have got Des Moines Adams with us today. Uh, Des Moines was a right rush end for us in 98 to 2002 before going on to a nice career in the NFL, AFL, and CFL. And now he works for teammates and he's a motivational speaker. So he's really um, come a long way since he played for the Huskers and done a lot and loves to barbecue. So, I won't tell you any more about Des Moines because I'd like Des Moines to tell us himself. Des Moines Adams. Hello, Hi hello. there. Hey. Very good. Yes. Welcome to our good show to today. You. Yes, so glad yes. you could make it. All well, right. Well, Des Moines, you are from Arkansas, correct? Yes. Born and raised. All Pine right. Ball. So, a lot of barbecue that went on in your family in Arkansas. Where did you develop the love for that? Well, for one, a lot of real barbecue. Being in Nebraska, <laughs> I must say, very so disappointed. My first experience to a barbecue was hamburgers and hot dogs. That is not a barbecue, Nebraskans. <laughs> that is a backyard grill out. So barbecue consists of charcoal, smoked chicken, ribs, mm -hmm. different meats. And so that's what I grew up around. And uh, now that I'm no longer a football player, I can actually enjoy being a normal person. That's what I like to do in my spare time. All so. right. Now in the book, you have your um, co-worker, Nick Harrington, yes. in there with you. And you said that he's your partner in barbecue crime. Yes. Can you tell us a little <laughs> bit more about that? You know, on the weekends, uh, when we just need to just wind down, uh, we just like to just uh, put some meat on the grill, um, wings, yes. and just let the grill smoke. Just let the smoke do its work. Mm -hmm. And just relax. Um, I see we have some cups, and uh, just to let you know, uh, our preference of drinks that really complement the wings are margaritas, oh. mojitos, mm -hmm. bud, light lime, uh -huh. because really this is really for the summer. Yeah. But it's just a great time just to relax and just um, look at the birds, listen to the crickets, mm -hmm. and uh, just really enjoy the summer. All mm -hmm. right. Now you have some kids at home. Yes. Tell me about how you get them involved in the whole barbecuing process, or do they kind of go out and play while daddy barbecues, and then just come in and eat? How do you get them involved with cooking? 
again, Nebraska <laughs> is a little different, so they don't really appreciate it. You know, oh, they're no. maybe doing a slip and slide or something yeah. like that. Uh, you know, we may put some hot dogs or hamburgers yeah. on the grill for them, but, you know, they really don't uh, take it serious. You know, mm -hmm. we really appreciate every <laughs> single taste, even the after smell on your fingers mm -hmm. and the fingernails. Uh, but for the most part, <laughs> um, a lot of times when it gets 8, 9 o'clock, we're still out there. Yeah. Because real barbecue, you can start as early as 8, mm -hmm. and um, the cooking will go until, you know, 8 or 9 o'clock at night. Yeah. So that's what I call real barbecue. Oh, It's gosh. the smoke Time that intensive. cooks the meat. Yeah. We're always in a hurry in Nebraska, so yeah. <laughs> we don't hurry things do. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just <laughs> switch, <laughs> fire, no taste, just, you know, those lines and stuff. But, but again, you know, steaks, I do appreciate uh, mm -hmm. your traditional propane grill, mm -hmm. but again, ribs, chicken, mm -hmm. you know, pork, um, hot links, you know, those are the things that I grew up eating, and I'm glad that I was able to tag team with Nick, who also comes from the South. Um, we both love to eat, <laughs> we both love to cook, and Perfect. so what a great way to Match develop a recipe, yep. Yep. home sweet home chicken wings. Awesome. Mm. Now, Nick and you both work for Teammates, Yes. and Teammates is also your nonprofit that you support um, through the book. So, for those who don't know about Teammates, can you tell us just a little bit more about their mission and what they do? Yes, uh, Teammates is a nonprofit organization started almost 25 years ago by Dr. Tom and Nancy Osborne. And really the goal was to provide one-to-one -one school based mentoring uh, to youth um, across the state. Started in Lincoln, now we're in over 130 communities, including Iowa and Southern California. We're serving almost 8,000 students. Um, and again, our goal is to impact the world by inspiring youth to reach their full potential through mentoring. And what that means is graduating from high school, having a plan after they graduate from high school and then hopefully pursuing some type of post-secondary education. Excellent. Awesome. Oh, We're what a great mission. Really happy to support teammates. Wow. Obviously, wow. the godfather of Husker football, <laughs> Dr. Tom Osborne, started the organization, so it's very near and dear to our hearts. Yes. Um, but other than that, you also have the game plan, which is another part of your career. Can you tell us just a little bit about that? Yes, you know, um, I have a passion for helping folks. You know, young Me people, too. adults, trying to be winners. You know, uh, Dr. Osborne, that's what he taught us. That's what he instilled in us as football players, but in life. So the game plan is really that other side of me. Uh, which entails me uh, going out, doing different types of motivational speakings, presentations, um, even um, staff developments when it comes to being winners, working as a team, and having a game plan to perform and, and really achieve those goals. Now, it's one thing to set a goal, but right, it's another right. thing to achieve that goal. And so everyone wants to be a winner. <laughs> everyone does. But they don't yes. take the time to have a game plan. So when you think of a football field, you have the touchdown. What are the strategies mm -hmm. in place yeah. to score? Right. And then what happens when you get tackled? Are you right. going to quit? Are you going to give up? So as a former starter, as someone that has really taken my game to that professional level, and now as a professional motivational speaker, also working professionally with teammates, uh, really just inspiring folks to be their best, reach their full potential. Uh, but I've been doing uh, the game plan now for about five years and uh, have to really uh, give uh, praise to Aaron Davis who has been very instrumental in being my mentor to really get to that level. Uh, Aaron does it on a large level. He's like the pastor. I'm like the minister. <laughs> so I always have to give props to Mr. Aaron Davis. And Aaron awesome. had a nice m and cookie recipe M &M in M &M our cookie. cookbook. Oh. So I know Sherry took some beautiful pictures of those cookies. Mm, and they were tasty. They I want to tell you. They were very tasty. Oh, so <laughs> I don't know if we could do a face-off between the wings and the cookies. <laughs> or maybe like he could just bring the cookies come. after we eat the wings Better because that's something that I failed idea. to do. What happens after we eat the wings? Well, we need some dessert, and so right. uh, maybe that could be something. I'll, I'll make sure that I, that I text him the Put next time. Put a bug time. in his yeah. ear. You let him know mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, so real quick, before we go into the recipe, um, had a great career in football after the Huskers. Yes. Can you tell us a few of the teams that you played for and maybe which one your favorite was? Sure. Ooh. You know, unfortunately, I did not get drafted after my senior year, which was 2002. We mm -hmm. went 7-7 seven seven for the Husker fans. That was our worst season over the last decade or so. 
but was very fortunate to have an opportunity to play in the Canadian Football League for a year and a half with the Edmonton Eskimos. Mm -hmm. Had an opportunity to uh, then make my move back to the States, play with the Packers for a half a season, then with the Tennessee Titans, and then I made a transition to the Arena Football League with the Nashville Cats and the San Jose Sabercats. And then wow. I actually ended my career right here in Omaha with the Omaha Beef. Okay. And that's when I knew it was time to hang it up. Yeah. Because another thing is Omaha beef. I love the steaks and that we got <laughs> sure. from work, you know, being a player, but, you know, with two degrees at the time, I still continue to get more education. And I was very fortunate to work at the university mm -hmm. after my playing days. Oh. Great. And wanted and to quit football so you could start cooking and eating, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> but hey, but I have to work out so that I can eat because yes. no longer am I practicing in this 100 degree weather that these uh -huh. players are doing. But great football career. I'm very fortunate that I left the game without any major injuries, um, no concussions. I can still move Wonderful. my fingers Yay. and jump around and stuff. Uh, you want but to like, jump around for us a little? You know, uh, <laughs> after I, I get a taste of um, these wings, oh. you may see it me might be the drink. Around. Okay, <laughs> well we're gonna we're gonna jump right All into right. we're gonna Do jump it. right yes. into the wings. Des Moines was talking about how he he likes to put them together. So we always like to see our players actually get into it because sure. we have a lot of guys. Uh, we have a lot of guys who Don't are cook? well. You know, they're maybe a little timid about actually doing the prep. You know, they might man the grill, but they don't necessarily do the prep in the kitchen. So we want our guys out there to, to really take part. Yes. Now, um, we have these lovely, lovely wings, and they're really big. And you said that sometimes when you cook them, you just use the whole thing, and I'm sure you pick all the nasty little feathers out of them. Yeah, so, you know, really it depends. You know, if it's just Nick and I or maybe some of the fellas, we would just uh, maybe just clip this piece. Okay. It looks like we have a clipper here. We have a... a these are from our Pampers chef um, consultant, okay. and she sh she uses them. They're good and sharp, and they should be able to snip right oh, through yeah. that bone wow. there. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah, so most of the time we just use the whole wing, but if we have other folks, we'll chop it up so okay. you have your traditional little leg. We have a, we have a nice sharp knife yeah. here for you to show us how you would go yeah. ahead and chop All that right. up. All right. So, well, I don't know if this knife would do any best oh, because we have the butcher he, knife, which is okay. So I have I, I have I a know. little I have a little culinary trick for for doing these. Oh. So you take your wing like this and you pop it. Oh. So you get these two joints to come apart. Okay. And then you can slice right through this little non-bony oh, piece. Right. See that? It's just a little joint, mm. and you're not actually cutting any bones. So that's how I do them. Okay. But it's a little trick if you're yes. if you've got somebody who's not real strong in the kitchen and you don't have a big cleaver to, to do them with. So I'm gonna That is good to know, Nick, my partner in crime. I hope you're watching this. This is our new trick, okay? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have you cut the wing off that one again, that little tip, right. and then I'm gonna I'm gonna see if you can pop it. Oh that. man. Yeah. You are oh, trusting oh me. well of okay. course you said you're an educator. Okay. That's right. Can oh. you I heard, no, Did you hear it pop? I heard the crack. Yeah. Then you take your. We're just going to take this, and we're just going to find just where go. that knuckle is, oh, yeah. and you should Finger be able up. to go right through oh, that it. That would not be good. Well, oh, maybe not. You can't go through. Oh well, maybe the knuckle. Oh. Yeah, you got it. You're about there. All right. Now, if I didn't have on this shirt, I'll be getting all. Oh, oh there, there, we go. Go. there we go. There we go. Ah. All right, I may need for you to finish it because I'm getting frustrated. <laughs> I may just pull it and I don't pull want it. wings to get all in your, in your the hair other and thing, The other thing we can do is we can just use this nice scissors here to cut okay. right through that. Little. Well, I apologize, I failed. You did not fail. You right. did not. And we're going to try it again because I, I just don't think I've taught you well enough. <laughs> so Sherry's fault. Okay. Sherry's fault. Cut that off again and all right. we're try it one more time. All right, I just love this thing. <laughs> Isn't that? Don't yeah. you think you should have one yeah. at your oh, at your okay, house? So that's you hear you good. hear the little the I little it. pop, and then you take kind of take your fingers and find where the little knuckle is, and that's where you're going to cut it. All right, one Seems knuckle. like a chiropractic move. Kind of a chiropractic, yeah, yeah. chicken chiropractic. Science and physics was not my subject in college, <laughs> so. There, oh, oh, look there at, we go. Oh my we gosh, you did it. You did it. We did it. There you go. There we go. Perfect. Nice. Perfect. All right. Now, I don't like to waste these. Now, do you guys save them at all? You know, if we, if we keep them and we smoke them, we tear them off and 
you know, I apologize for any uh, dog lovers that <laughs> are not big fans of this, but our dogs love to Do nibble they? on these things. And so we normally give these to our dogs and they just love it. They sit right there. They're so good. They're just waiting. <laughs> they're just happy. Very proper. Happy, and then as happy, soon as happy. The extra, they're ready. Okay. Well, that's our, our little demonstration on the on the wings. I'm going to just oh, give you one of those because we don't want to have you with the old bloody raw chicken bloody hands. raw chicken hands. Mm -hmm. You talked about barbecue, and one of my favorite little time savers with barbecuing is. It is a little grill tool that I discovered a number of years ago. We're going to put this on the set so we can Actually see going it. To light something on fire we are not here. lighting anything on fire. We, we are, are not. not. We are not. No. Oh. But this is, this is a, this is to light your coals on fire. And you talked about you know using now you use the green egg. You have some special tools. Yes, but but again, you know, not everyone is on that level. And so if you have a, just a regular uh, charcoal grill or smoker. Really the key is charcoal. You definitely want to have charcoal when it comes to grilling real barbecue, especially these wings. But right, really right. the secret, which is no secret, is the wood. That's right. You're going to tell us about the wood. Yes, right. yes. And so what we typically do is we soak the wood in water for mm -hmm. you know up to an hour if possible. Because then once you start the charcoal, make sure that it's um, you know, halfway gray. Then you just toss the wood mm -hmm. on because typically wood fires up. Sure, starts but right on fire. But when you soak it in water, uh, there is no fire; it's just smoke. And then you can just put the wood on top of the charcoal, put the wings on, and just sit and back and you have go. your mojito. Right, right. Yeah. Well, that's that's where this little gadget comes in handy, because all you need you don't need any lighter fluid with this. You take just crunched up newspaper and you put it on top of your Weber or your little, your little grill mm -hmm. grates. You're going to stick that right in this little opening here. Angela, I gave you one. You're going to chop that in there. Good morning. I want you to crush that up. You're going to stick that in there. Okay. We, I promised you we're not going to set this on fire because no, yeah. I think there are fire codes here. <laughs> so you're going to put this on the top of your little Weber grill like okay. that and then then you add uh, your briquettes. You some yeah, so you, right. you dump that into the top of this. You can see there's a little mm -hmm. a little pan on the bottom. I'm gonna let my camera people see it. See in the bottom of our thing here, and then you've got your paper on the bottom, and then you would fill this nearly to full. You take your little lighter and you pop it in one of those holes. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see on the side over there, pop yeah. it in one of the holes. And you'll start these little pieces of paper on fire and there they'll start to smoke and they'll light these briquettes. Typically, mm -hmm. if you use briquettes, you know, Des Moines, it takes about 30 minutes for I them to know, get all light, I know, right? I know. Using this little apparatus, you're gonna cut that time down to about 10 to 12 minutes. But like wow. you said, if you're adding wood, when these start to get white, you can just dump that wood right on the top. Exactly. And then oh boy. you get to take this nice hot thing. You pick it up with this handle here. There's a heat shield here and this little handle. And then you're just going to dump this with the charcoal briquettes right into your grill. The nice thing about it, using this method, is since the, the little charcoal briquettes are compacted together, they're mm -hmm. all at the same temperature at the same time. So okay. you know how you get hot spots in the yeah. grill? Yeah. Does it drive you crazy? Yeah, so you get these little hot spots, and so this actually keeps your all everything that's in there at the same temperature. Mm. But I wanted to know how to put the wood in when I used this and you when you talked about soaking now, it. Again, you know, you have wood logs but also wood chips. You know, we prefer uh, hickory or a, uh, apple flavor. But you know, uh, with this uh, I would really recommend um, wood chips. Wood chips. Smaller, okay. you Smaller. Can put it on there, start to smoke and Oh man, that, that is great. I, yeah, you'll yes. have to try it. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, Angela, yeah. we have a nice spicy drink to add yes, to our to our dish today mm. with these home sweet home chicken wings. So yes. you want to tell us about it? Absolutely. Well, Des Moines says that they like to have some margaritas or mojitos and John at Salt, um, our generous sponsor who pairs our drinks with our food, has created something similar to that but a little bit different. What he has for us is a crafted jalapeno beer. 
So what you have is the beer taste along with a mojito or margarita type taste to make something a little spicy to kind of complement that. So basically what it is, we'll bring it out and we're going to show you how to make it. It's really fun. You have your shaker here. Everything John does he likes to do with the shaker. So <laughs> we've got our shaker here. There's your beer. But first of all, you're going to put your lime wheel into the shaker, your fresh Italian parsley into the shaker, some jalapeno. Oh, yes. yeah. I said spicy. And then the agave nectar, which is the sweetener in it, so it's not too spicy. We've got to have a little bit of sweet, too. So we're going to put that in there. Now we need to shake this, but we don't put the beer in yet, or it's going to explode all over the place. Mm, no, so what sure. we do. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, it goes true. Yeah, I just got to muscle it. Yep, muscle okay. it on in there. So give this a good shake. Yeah, well, John says you're that bruising, bruising up the, bruising up the parsley. Yeah, leaves. we're mixing and bruising, making mm. sure it's all good in there. We're going to take this out. Now he has suggested zweek is how it's pronounced. I looked it up. Did you? I did. Good. Good. Um, which is a uh, pale lager. If you cannot find this, which is a little difficult to find, you can use an Amstel light, you can use a Molson, or a good old bush light. Okay. That yeah. works too. So we'll go ahead and pour this on top. Let that go down a little. And then we're just going to pour it right out. Maybe not. Maybe let it go down lean, a little bit more. Lean your glass in and it won't. There you go. There, there we you go. go. Oh, interesting. Here you yeah. go. Thank first. you. We can Thank always count on John to give us something unique interesting and tasty yes All right. so give that to you a little bit myself looks like i got a lot of parsley there <laughs> it works uh, should we all do Sweet a little toast. taste yeah. all toast. right here's, here's the spicy food absolutely and spicy beer wow well, that's good Yum. It is. Ooh. Look, kick. It does. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, it does. Who would have that thought jalapeno. that little bit of shaking would actually. Wake you up. Ooh. Get your attention. It does. All right. yeah. Yeah. That is it does. good. That jalapeno really comes through. Yes, it yeah. sure. It certainly, certainly does. <laughs> well, let's see if we can try these nice spicy wings here. I'm going to give, put Angela one on the plate. Why, and thank since you. I am talking, I'm not going to be. Eating one now, of them. is it uncouth of me to use a fork? Is this something you just pick oh, up? Oh, I think it's now? another southern <laughs> education. Down south, we use our fingers. I mean, that's why you, you have to wash your hands before you eat anyway. Yeah, that's exactly. right. But I, I noticed, especially with women, you know, it's just <laughs> etiquette to use a fork and a knife. So it, it's If okay. you're telling me to pick it up with my hand, however, I'm going to pick it up with my hand. <laughs> however, I've learned that uh, there is a proper way of, of eating corn. Okay. Yes. And so the way that you do it, two fingers and just kind of bite into very it. Very dainty. Who knew there was a proper way to eat barbecue? I didn't yeah. know that. Oh so my gosh. really, there's Everything. only two fingers. Hey. And if you're on a date or something, you just kind of two fingers on a napkin. Mm -hmm. If you order talking. wings on a date, you don't like the person. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty obvious. So. Or spaghetti. Or spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Or spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Now, this Ooh. particular recipe oh, has good. some zing to it. I loved it. It was awesome. Awesome. It does. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and, and, you know, it's a uh, combination of sweetness and kick. It, you know, yep. just like this drink. These mm -hmm. wings will really get your attention. One of my favorite wing um, spots in Lincoln, Nebraska, is called the Water and Hope. Yes. Because I love mm. just the flavor and just the kick. And so really some of the spices, it kind of gives you that Water and Hope feel, mm -hmm. but yet mm -hmm. with a little sweetness, really takes me back home. And so when Nick and I, we started working together, we both love food. And uh, just the creation of something that makes us think about the South mm -hmm. is, is what I miss. Arkansas <laughs> uh, is, um, you know, again, um, my family, uh, they're still doing well. And I actually got a chance to visit my family about two weeks ago. Oh, good. Did you uh, cook for them? Uh, they cooked for me. They Perfect. did. My grandmother. Uh, you should have cooked this for them. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, in addition to this, something else that's pretty popular in the South is fried catfish. Mm, but, in, but, you know, of course, the grill, you know, it's, um, it's healthier. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, like I say, with the smoke and then uh, some of the seasons that we provide, you know, um, really gives it that good taste. And so you can still eat healthy when you use the grill. 
Hey, let's try some more wings. I, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the spices that we have in sure, here. Yeah. I was kind of curious about how you put that together. Is that a special recipe that you guys did, or is that something that your mama taught you? Well, I must admit, you know, not everything is from the South. One of our favorite uh, shows to watch, Nick and I, is uh, Dine and uh, Oh, Diners, diners Drive yes. Engine yes. Dives. Yes. Yes. yes, and so just the way that they just toss those meats into the uh -huh. different seasons and then it just brings things out. So, you know, we, um, you know, have, um, you know, kind of stolen. So, it's so you kind of stolen yeah. some of those ideas. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. But, but, but really, it's, like I say, the main thing that makes these wings pop out is the smoke. It's I mean, the smell. Okay. Yes, because I don't care how well you season something, it's the smoke that makes it that home sweet home barbecue. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Without the charcoal and barbecue, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, without the charcoal, wood, and barbecue sauce, it's not barbecue. True. All right. It's Very a grill true. out, backyard Very grill true. out. Des Moines says. Ah, Des Moines yes. says. We yes. do not know how to barbecue. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, okay. and, and again, uh, I do want to applaud the former players that are out there that took part in this book. It really shows everyone that we are more than just football players. Yes, yes we have we're to eat to perform, but now that we are no longer performing, uh, we can show everyone else what we're made of. We have other talents, and um, again, I want to uh, applaud everyone else that is out there. And um, Aaron Davis, if you're listening, <laughs> um, looking forward to some of those cookies, okay? <laughs> because we always All are right. looking for something sweet after we eat our wings. You can get Des Moines' full recipe in Big Red Recipes, along with 43 other wonderful recipes. was so proud of you guys for coming up with such great things. Um, didn't really know what I'd get when I first started the project, but you've done great. So BigRedRecipes.com, check that out. The book is available, so you can get it now. And you can also find out a lot of backstory on the website, as well as more information on the guys and what they've been up to since they left the football team, um, the connection to their charity, and a lot of other great information. So make sure you check out BigRedRecipes.com. Put it back to you, Sherry. That is about it for our show today. I want to thank all of you who've tuned in. Um, we've had a lot of fun with you. If you have a favorite football player, Cornhusker player who really likes to cook, you'd like to see them on the show, or if you have a kitchen gadget you'd like to see demonstrated, um, write to us at the show at BigRedRecipes.com. We'd love to hear yeah. from you. But thank you, Devoin, for being on our show today. We really appreciate you. And just a shout out to my crew, everyone out there um, who's on the cameras. Uh, we appreciate you. And until next time, God bless you. And we'll see you again on the Big Red Kitchen Show. Thanks so much. Go Big Red. The Big Red Kitchen Show was brought to you by Markle Auto Group, Salt Restaurant, Wren's Display, the Pampered Chef products provided by consultant Heidi Lepold. Sea of Red Wine, D. Ford Family Dental, Corporate Creations, D. Tendenza Food Styling, and Photography. <laughs>